One of the things I despise the most when it comes to talking about Nintendo Switch 2 are people that try to attack a system, right? They're, they're going after it before the system has even released. Now, there are many reasons that people could do this. Some of this could just be, hey, they really want Nintendo to make a standard home console that's super powerful, like a PlayStation 5, like you can see behind me. Sorry to step the right way. But besides that, what I really think it comes down to is a lot of fanboyism and just wishing ill on other people's preferences. Now, there is a third caveat to this, and this is just Nintendo fans that maybe just want Nintendo games to perform the best they possibly can. And to that, I do understand. Nintendo's probably never going to be that type of company again when it comes to hey, we're going to be at the bleeding edge of power like they used to do back in the day when they were doing the GameCube and the Nintendo 64. And those days are probably behind us, but Nintendo's not going to abandon the handheld space probably anytime soon. And yes, it's highly likely Nintendo's next system is going to be a hybrid handheld home console again. Why? Because it was so successful the first time. Nintendo almost always has sequel systems when that happens. And so now... We need to dive into why this is becoming a debate because people are starting to act like what the power of the Switch 2 is reportedly going to be. And we're just talking about from a power perspective, it's supposedly a massive disappointment and games are going to look like crap. <laughs> now, how did this debate start? Look, I don't really know where it originated. It's been raging all weekend long all over X, but I don't honestly know where it is. I've seen it on Reddit now. I'm starting to see a bunch of YouTube videos pop up about it. It's clearly a big debate. So I want to bring it to the forefront. This is one of the earliest tweets I could see about this made back on January 11th uh, from this random user. I don't know who they are. They don't have a huge following, but you see 7.7 .7 million views on this. And it says, Nintendo is the most washed gaming company of all time. What do you mean the Switch 2 is as powerful as the effin' base PS4? That console is a decade old. <laughs> no, seriously. This is like one of the biggest things people are raging about. Now, to be clear, we don't even know 100% how powerful the Switch 2 is. It's a system that hasn't been announced. Now, I have been talking to some people behind the scenes that are a bit more knowledgeable and in the know than me, and I can give you guys some layman's terms. See, we talked about in the past what the specs for the Switch 2 are expected to be or known to be because, in fact, we've had some leaks. NVIDIA had a literal leak last year. We've had some kernel leaks. There's been a number of leaks regarding the T239 chip that is custom built just for Nintendo Switch 2, at least based on all the data we have available. And the thing is, I gave you all the tech specs last time, and one common question I saw down in the section was, well, what does this all really mean? 12, 12 to 16 gigabytes of RAM, what does this even mean? What's this uh, 1.7 to 2 teraflops and you know, 3.5 to 4.5 teraflops. What does any of this stuff even mean? What does what 8A78C cores even mean? Right, I understand. Tech specs are not something everyone can get. But what we do know is at least a baseline comparison we can make. And again, this is baseline because technically the things we're about to compare it to, the Nintendo Switch 2 is using newer architecture with newer features, including things like DLSS that aren't even available on the things that we're comparing to. So there's going to be just things the Switch 2 can do these other systems can't. And one of those systems is the PlayStation 5. And yes, Switch 2 will be able to do some things PlayStation 5 can't even do. Does that make it as powerful as the PlayStation 5? Absolutely not. So just to give you a perspective, you always got to target two different things when it comes to a hybrid system. You have your handheld performance and your docked performance. Now, from what we understand, if you want a comparison in handheld, it looks like the Nintendo Switch 2 is going to be very, very close to the PlayStation 4 <clears throat> Pro. Not the base PS4, the PlayStation 4 Pro. Now, it will have some shortcomings in handheld compared to the PlayStation 4 Pro, but potentially makes up for those shortcomings with DLSS. So in the end, it looks like we should expect it to actually be better than a base PlayStation 4 and more like a PlayStation 4 Pro. And for starters, that's just handheld. When you dock the SOB, it should be right around an Xbox Series S, again, with more modern architecture and better 
feature sets that when custom built for. Remember, Switch is using bespoke hardware compared to the competition. ARM CPUs are pretty much only being used outside of supercomputers and phones by Apple. So this is not something that has had a lot of work done for it developer-wise. The point is that yes, this is kind of bespoke hardware, and as such, developers that custom for it are gonna end up finding a lot of really interesting ways to use it that you can't use the other hardware. Now, setting all that aside, when you think about that, what is wrong even if in handheld it was a PlayStation 4? I mean, don't go telling these people what all these handheld PCs are doing, because almost every single handheld PC is basically outputting base PlayStation 4 stuff. And I know people want to talk about phones and the iPhone 50. Dude, it's running the games at 360p. Can we just stop? It's 360p upscaled. The phones are not performing PlayStation 4 level right now. So when we talk about the PlayStation 4, and even the base PS4, and what do you mean? It's a 10-year-old system, blah, blah, blah. Can we just remember how great PlayStation 4 games look today? In fact, it, throughout this video, you've already been seeing a number of PlayStation 4 games that are just showing out and showing the capabilities of the PlayStation 4, and also maybe showing that PlayStation 5 and this Xbox Series S and X generation is one where consumers are starting to see some potential diminishing returns when it comes to visuals. Now, we're not going all the way. Obviously, you get 4K now, you get resolution and more frame rates, and that's all amazing. But from a visual perspective, games on PlayStation 4 don't really look significantly, and to some people, even noticeably worse then games on PlayStation 5. Now that might change as the years go on and assuredly there'll be this massive PlayStation 5 game that just looks impossible to be on PS4. I just don't know that it exists yet and I've beaten Spider-Man 2. Spider-Man 2 is PlayStation 5 exclusive and I don't really think it looks demonstrably better than Spider-Man on PlayStation 4. It is and from a technical perspective it's definitely better but it's kind of like just you just at a glance you sit back and watch gameplay of both and they kind of just look very similar and i think that is something to be said one for the fact that we were always going to get to the land of diminishing returns someday from a visual perspective when it just comes to the styles that developers are choosing to use and how far you could push them but beyond that it's also just a lot of games on Switch are going to look phenomenal. Can we just be honest here? Power is not a reason to buy a system. And I understand a lot of this debate right now is really about fan wars and fan debates and isn't actually about the games themselves because ultimately games are what matter. Nintendo games, as incredible as they look today on Switch, just Go look at Mario Odyssey. Go look at Tears of the Kingdom. Go look at Metroid Prime Remastered. Go look at these games. And now imagine what Nintendo, imagine what Monolith Soft with Xenoblade Chronicles 3, imagine what Monolith Soft is going to be able to do with base PS4 output. I mean, oh my gosh, would it be stunning. And that's in handheld. When you dock the SOB, it's going to look even better. Like, this is the part that's so frustrating in all of this, is one, you're only talking about one aspect of the system instead of both the max power profile versus the lowest power profile, and on top of that, it's about a system that's not even here, and you're acting like being compared to the PlayStation 4 is an insult when mobile phones can't even play games to that level, let alone the fact that all these mobile handheld PCs are basically just doing PlayStation 4 levels of output with their visuals and play, like mobile handheld gamers are busy praising the hell out of what those things are doing. So I'm just gonna throw out there, I'm just gonna throw out there that I personally am one, frustrated at the way a lot of this stuff is being framed, but besides that, I'm just gonna say the games are what matter the most and all that matters is that it has enough power for the games it's trying to run. And the bottom line is, and it's gonna have more than enough power 
Most third-party games that want to be on Switch 2 should be able to be there even more so than they were on Switch. Third parties that choose to prioritize and custom build their games from the Switch 2 on up are going to end up seeing phenomenal results. We know that because just look at the PlayStation 4. Look at the games it has for the ones that are custom built for it. Oh, and by the way, uh, Nintendo's games are going to be incredible. Oh, my. Oh, 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 man, I can't wait to see what that new 3D Mario game is going to do. The new Zelda, the new Monolith, uh, the new Nintendo games are going to be so incredible on this platform. I can't wait. So in the end, does any of this matter? It's for a system that hasn't even been announced. So no, but also it's really tiring watching these fan wars. So I wanted to sort of set the record straight. Make sure we're all on that same page. Make sure we all understand the games are what really matter and the games are going to be incredible. And get ready to talk about some more news as the week goes on. I am Nathana Robojans from Nintendo Prime. I want to thank you so much for being here. And I'll catch you guys in the next video.